Top 7 mistakes non-EU lawyers make when filing EU trademarks and one bonus tip. I am Rolf Klesen and I am filing EU trademarks for over 20 years now. And in this time I have observed reoccurring mistakes by non-EU lawyers who want to protect trademarks in the EU for their clients. Here we go. Number one mistake, prior rights and availability. This seems to be obvious, but more often than you think, the EU trademarks are filed without a prior search for earlier similar trademarks. For example, a trademark is filed in the home country of the client, for example the US, and then a comprehensive search has been done in the US, but not in the EU, and then within the priority of six months, the trademark is filed in the EU without an additional search for earlier similar trademarks in the EU. This is probably the most costly mistake because then the client can be held liable for trademark infringement in the EU. Second mistake, too narrow goods and services. Trademarks do not have to be new when filed and sometimes you don't have to rely on the priority of an earlier trademark in the home country of the client. Let's look at an example. A client has filed a trademark in the home country, let's say the US, for software for heart rate monitoring. And then in the EU, you could file the much broader term software. Let's look at another example. Um, in the EU, you could file a trademark for clothing, the general and broad term clothing. Whereas, for example, in the US, you would have to file women's clothing, namely dresses, skirts, blouses, and so on. Third mistake, what are the implications for filing a trademark under the Madrid Protocol versus filing a trademark directly with the European Union Intellectual Property Office, the EU IPO? In principle, there is not really a big difference. You get the same trademark protection with both routes and filing via the Madrid Protocol is much easier and cheaper. However, when filing via the Madrid Protocol, you are limited to the scope of the basic registration. So for example, if your client comes from China or the US, you have filed the trademark for software for heart rate monitoring and you are limited to the scope in the EU. If you file directly with the EU IPO, you can file the trademark for software, the much broader term. Fourth mistake, blocking coexistence agreements. Sometimes existing coexistence agreements are overlooked that block the client for entering the market in the EU with this trademark, with these goods and services. Fifth mistake, use in the EU. EU trademarks can be cancelled if they have not been used in a significant portion of the EU within five years of registration. Sixth mistake, exhaustion of trademark rights is a little different than in many other countries. In the EU, the rights derived from a trademark are only exhausted if the goods or services are offered in the EU that the trademark owner has put on the market in the EU or are put on the market in the EU with the consent of the trademark owner. So if the goods, for example, are imported from China and then put on the market in the EU, then the trademark rights are not exhausted and you can enforce the trademark in the EU against the offering of these goods. Let's look at an example. Your client is offering the goods, original goods in Vietnam and some smart seller is thinking, well, let's buy these goods in Vietnam and then import them to the EU and then sell them in the EU. That's not possible. You can enforce your trademark against the seller that is selling original goods that were intended for the Vietnamese market, but not for the EU market. Seventh mistake, inadequate representation. From all this, you might have seen that it is wise to give the filing of EU trademarks into the hands of an experienced trademark attorney, so do not use inexperienced service providers. Now the bonus tip that is not directly linked to filing EU trademarks, too narrow enforcement of EU trademarks. Some very few courts in the EU can render decisions that can be enforced in the whole EU and not only in the country where the decision has been rendered. So for example, if you go to the local civil court in Cologne, you can only get a decision that can be enforced in Germany. If you go to the court in Düsseldorf, 
then you can get a decision that can be enforced EU-wide. For a link to the list of these courts, visit the original article that is linked below this video. I am attending the 2024 INTA annual meeting in Atlanta starting from today and I'm looking forward to meet all my colleagues from all over the world. Feel free to get in touch if you want to meet. Also, we celebrate the 10th anniversary of our podcast IP Fridays in Atlanta on Monday 6 p.m. So if you want to get one of the last tickets, go to ipfridays.com. Leave me a thumbs up and a subscription under this video if you like the video and see you in Atlanta.